Hi everyone, welcome to my Owls 2019 Magical Readathon wrap up. I've got my full Ravenclaw regalia on here the Ravenclaw sweater, the Ravenclaw scarf, the snitch earrings. I even have my wand that I acquired when I was in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter this month, which was very exciting to have these two things coincide. I got to read all five books that I had on my TBR, and this is the first time in in the seven years that I've been on booktube that I actually completed every single book that I had picked out as a TBR for a readathon, which is, I mean, five books in one month is like nothing to some people, but to me that's definitely more than I usually read. The total page count was 1,861, which is that's pretty good, that's decent, it's decent. I am now far exceeding my Goodreads reading goal at the moment on where I should be. I think I'm about five books ahead right now, which is awesome. Since this is a wrap up, I wanna do a little recap about what I read, what owl it pertained to, and so on. So I will talk about them in the order that I read them. The first book that I finished was A Short History of Women by Kate Walbert. This was my charms pick, the charms prompt was age line and it was to read an adult work so this definitely qualifies as a book written for adults. It was described as a book following uh, generations of women who are related to each other and how the choices of earlier generations can affect the lives of uh, current generations and when you're you know reading about at that one moment. I found this book kind of hard to get into. I ended up giving it three stars because it did grow on me as the book went. I feel like I got used to the writing style as the book went on. There was a couple things that kind of threw me in terms of just where the story would go and there was also I think at least two parts where the story was actually told from a male point of view, um, like a husband, but talking a lot about the women and it would kind of like drift in and out like you were really in the person's head so their thoughts would you know travel along and kind of detour and then come back around. This is a very literary fiction sort of book so if you like books that um, have those connections between families but it's you know pretty small and you're getting like pictures of these women's lives, but it's not super detailed. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm doing a horrible job of even selling it to people that would like this book, but yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, it's, it's it made the 10 best books for the New York Times, so obviously somebody liked it. Like this was in 2009, around the time this book came out, so somebody really enjoyed it. Many people really enjoyed it, but it just wasn't quite my thing. The next book that I finished was Rebel Spring by Morgan Rhodes. This is the second book in the Fallen Kingdoms series. This was my pick for Defense Against the Dark Arts, and the prompt for that one was the spell Reducto, so it was read a book that starts with the letter R. Boom. Uh, this was the first book that I actually read while I was in um, Orlando enjoying the Wizarding World and reading for the Owl's Magical Readathon. So, you know, a little bit of a magical moment there. Unfortunately, this book was not as good as the first one. I can't really say much about the plot because that would obviously give away a lot of the first book, but I found that we, I felt both rushed and not rushed at the same time. I felt like there was a lot of characters that were dying, um, but I didn't feel connected to them at all. Like, it was sort of like, oh, okay, well, they're dead. Oh, you know, 30 pages later, somebody else dies. And I'm like, okay, who's going to be left? This book is a part of a series that I think has six or seven books in it. I'm like, who is gonna be left to tell the rest of this story if all of these characters are dying? So that part I wasn't as thrilled about, but at the same time, I still enjoy like the overarching plot about where this book is going. I like the world that's been created. I enjoy the characters. They're definitely following, falling into that YA trope of like everybody liking everybody. Everybody's got a crush on everyone. It's like, who doesn't like who? But yeah, I'm definitely going to continue with the series. I had the third book already on my bookshelf um, from a long time ago, so I'm gonna keep going. But this one was only a three star. The Fallen Kingdoms was a four star, but fortunately this one only gets three, and it was like not a great three, like a meh three. 
The next book that I finished was Gemina. This is also the second book in a series, but this is the second book for the Illuminae Files trilogy. This is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the ginormous book that you've probably seen around because these are very mem memorable because it's not written like a traditional text. There's a lot of pictures. So even though it's about 659 pages, it was pretty doable for a readathon. This one fit the prompt of potions, which was the next ingredient or a sequel. Uh, this one was also not quite as good as the first book, I think because it felt very similar. The way the characters spoke and interacted with each other reminded me very much of the characters in the first book. And I say that because we follow different characters in this book. They eventually come in contact with the characters in the first book, but like these are supposed to be separate people and just the banter and the way a lot of people were talking it just I felt like I was reading the same people again. The relationships were a little bit different but I it felt like a lot of the story the the overarching bigger ideas were very similar like how this plot played out even like the fast things that they pull on you that you aren't expecting they just yeah I mean there's definitely some stuff in here that I didn't see coming so I have to give that to the book and I also just really love the setting like being on a spaceship sci-fi deep space travel like I really enjoy that aspect of both of the stories and as far as I know that'll continue to some degree in the third book so I will definitely be reading Obsidio um I just felt like this this definitely dipped I gave it a four star still because it is still a very enjoyable read like the, you know there's still I just love the format I mean I'm a sucker for this kind of format and yeah there were dramatic moments once again not afraid to kill people off but I felt like a lot of things were re replayed from the first book just in a slightly different way with like slightly different characters. Four star for this, but not like a super strong four star. Illuminae was like a strong four star. The second to last book that I finished was An Artist of the Floating World by Kazuo Ishiguro. This was my transfiguration pick, which was to read a book with sprayed edges or a red cover. And this one has bright green sprayed edges. I mostly picked it because it was one of the shortest books that I had on my shelf. It's about 220 pages. I read Never Let Me Go by the same author a couple years ago and I was not a fan. So I was definitely a bit worried about this one. However, I am happy to say that this actually impressed me. I liked this. I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot more than Never Let Me Go and considering that I was a little skeptical going into it, I've come out the other end and I'm happy to say that I enjoyed reading this. It's about an um, an older man uh, in the late 1940s, early 1950s in Japan, so post-World War II, he is a painter and he's reflecting on his life and his children, his grandchild, and kind of what's happened in the past to get him where he is today. A lot of just reflecting on times gone by and uh, on people that he used to know and kind of where he's ended up now. So you're sort of dropped into the story and you don't totally understand what's going on, but you figure it out. And I liked that there was there was sort of this undercurrent of darkness due to the World War II story. And I liked that. It kept me intrigued. Like I wanted to keep reading to find out more about what happened to this guy during World War II. It's definitely not a World War II book though. I know some people are very like, oh, I'm so tired of that subject. This isn't that kind of book. It's just that just happens to be one small aspect, but it was something that I usually enjoy reading about. So I gripped onto it. This is um, a three star for me. I'd say almost a three and a half star. This one I, I would recommend. I feel like I don't hear a lot of people talk about this book. They usually talk about, um, I believe, Remains of the Day and The Never Let Me Go being his more popular ones. But I think this one deserves some recognition as well. The last book that I finished to complete my five owls was The Lost Continent Travels in Small Town America by Bill Bryson. This fulfilled the History of Magic Challenge which was to read a book that was published at least 10 years ago. This book was published in 1989 and let me tell you it, it shows, it definitely shows, there's some things in this book that do not hold up well 30 years later. Like. Mm. So Bill Bryson writes nonfiction books and in this book he is returning after living in the UK, um, specifically England, for the last 10 years. He's decided to come back to the US, visit his family, and also road trip around America and 
It says travels in small town America. He does travel through lots of small towns, but he also hits a lot of big cities as well. So it's a little misleading in the title. It's broken up into two parts, the Eastern part and the Western part of the country. The Eastern part is about two thirds of this book. The Western part is a third. I liked certain parts of this because I enjoy road trip books. I like the idea of road tripping the US. I would love to do it myself someday. So that aspect of the story made me excited and like I wanted to keep reading. But at the same time, the way he writes can sometimes be like a little too much for me. He's very like sarcastic and mocking sometimes. And there was certain things that he said about like people and how they looked or just comments that he made that m might have been more acceptable in 1989, but in 2019, it didn't read well. And I was kind of like, ooh, ooh. So basically any tourist was described as fat. So it was kind of taking fat and associating that with bad things, which I don't, that don't, I don't like that. Um, so that was hard to read because it did come up many times. And I feel like that wouldn't fly as much today. I mean, that stuff still pops up in books, but it just, I feel like that wouldn't be as prevalent if this book had been written today. What's also confusing is that because the book is split up into part one and part two, um, you got your east and your west, you're like, oh, okay, like he, he left from his home in Iowa where his mom lives, traveled around the east, comes back, and then he must have gone and done the west. But the thing was, he actually, there was some time in between. He traveled the east in October, and then he was traveling the west in April, but I had no idea like that that was a thing until he started commenting on the snow and the smelling spring, and I'm like, wait, but I thought we were going into fall before. So there's no indication that the actual splitting of the trips takes place at different times. There was also no maps in here, like nothing to indicate the route that he took, where he went. I feel like that's just something that the addition of this book could have done better with. I mean, this is a kind of an odd addition. It's like this horrible brown color. It's got cows on the front, which, okay, I don't think it's a particularly pretty cover. I just feel like the addition of this book isn't great. So if there had been some maps in here, it might have helped the story, but yeah. So I gave this a three on Goodreads, but it's more like a two and a half. It was rough. Easy read, like very readable because he's like, he's like, he's just talking to you the way he's writing. So there were things to like in here, but it was really hard to get over the things that I didn't enjoy. Those are the five books, the five owls that I completed. So that means that uh, come Newt's time in August, I'll be able to continue trying to reach my career goal of becoming a ministry worker. For Newt's, I will be able to pick specific departments that I might want to work in because ministry worker is not the flashiest job title, but Five Owls was reasonable for me and it fit five books that I was relatively interested in reading that were on my shelves. But I'm looking forward to seeing how the Newt's play out and, and putting myself through even more of a challenge. It's going to be really hard to actually pass all my Newt's, but I'm really happy with myself for being able to complete my entire TBR and actually, you know, get those owls to be the ministry work. I feel like Harry Potter is a really good motivator. If you guys participated in the 2019 Owls, let me know how you did, if there was any books that you read that you really enjoyed, or maybe you kind of had some experiences like I did where I was like, oh, that's too bad. That was really disappointing. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you later.